Hello guys and welcome back to another edition of our Dark Souls 3 walkthrough. We're going to continue at the Catacombs of Karthus, but before we do, I'm going to recommend a few things very quickly that will help us out during the rest of our walkthrough. The first thing I'm going to do is purchase Speak a Purging Stone desire. from Yuria to reverse my hollowing because I don't like looking like a zombie, but you don't have to if you don't mind the look. Now, I think you could die a total of three times before you start looking like a hollow again. So it's completely optional if you want to use this or not. Oh, hand in one. In addition, I do recommend that you purchase 200 arrows, 100 of the fire arrows, and 100 of the large arrows. I've also upgraded my bow to uh, level 2. You should be able to do that by now because you should have an excess of Titanite shards. Other than that, you oh, could turn yeah. in the pyromancy tome we found <laughs> in the last video to our pyromancy teacher. Well, well. I've never seen anything like this. This inscription. This tome is from the catacombs. Fascinating. On this day, the teacher learns alongside the pupil. <laughs> By turning in the tome, you can now purchase the Karthus Flame Arc, which is, I think, one of the better buffs available to you. Aside from pyromancy, you can also Back turn in, in many of the scrolls to Orbic, our sorcery, sorcery teacher. Oh my. This is stupendous. And the undead legion of Farron possesses sorceries quite unknown. Thank you for upholding your end of the bargain. I doubt I ever would have made this discovery alone. Now, let us unravel the thing. So you may put these new sorceries to use. <laughs> oh my. Well, this is very unusual. It's from Ulysseal, an ancient land of golden sorceries. Not even the Dragon School possesses such a long lost scroll. What would the Xanthus scholars say with their ridiculous headwear? <laughs> they would simply slaver over this find. <laughs> The first one I recommend is Hidden Body. It allows you to turn your body invisible. I also find both the Farron Flash Sword and the Farron Great Sword to be excellent sorceries, only because I lean toward melee builds, even when I use sorceries. In addition to that, the Farron Hail is an excellent projectile with its shotgun range. You could try a few of the other ones if you really want to go into sorcery. Come again. Now, as we're heading back to the bonfire, you'll, you'll notice that after defeating the Undead Legion, Hawkwood has gone missing from the Fireling Shrine. Since he's not inside of Fireling Shrine, we could probably look for him out by the grave we talked to him last time. Let's go check it out. And you'll see that he's not here either, but we'll find another item. Hawkwood's shield. Let's go ahead and read this. It reads, Shield that belonged to Hawkwood, a deserter from the Undead Legion. The unique swordsmanship of the Watchers does not normally allow for the use of shields, and Hawkwood's very possession of it was telltale of his defeat. From this, I think we start to understand that after abandoning the ideology of the Abyss Watchers, Hawkwood probably felt very defeated. However, after watching us very closely, he probably realizes that there is another way. So he is probably now searching for another way to augment his own combat abilities in a way that the Abyss Watchers could have never imagined. We'll find more about him later. All right, let's go ahead and go back to Karthus. 
where we will continue our journey inside of the catacombs. We are going to go ahead and follow this ball of undead, but not too closely because it's going to return the same direction. All you have to do is lean towards the edge here and it, you can avoid it. Don't linger too long in its path, otherwise it'll smash you on the way back. And you'll notice over here in this corner, there's a few rats. Now, we're going to continue down this path, but you should be careful because on the roof, there's a lot of slime. And if you're not careful, they'll fall on your head and damage you. I highly recommend uh, killing them with fire. It takes a lot less time this way. You can also run right and underneath them. As long as you don't linger too much, they will fall without sticking to your head. Be careful with the enemies, uh, skeletal enemies up ahead. You want to lure them out only one by one. But they're not too difficult. They fall apart as soon as you hit them with a strike weapon. And they are easy to stagger. They also have a very low probability of dropping a shield that looks like that wheel that they're rolling in. I think that wheel actually looks really awesome. And it's pretty badass when you carry it as a shield. But we are going to continue taking out all of these slimes and skeletons very carefully I got lucky on my RNG and I was able to grab that shield You'll notice that a lot of the enemies are going to start dropping Titanite shards left and right. So it wouldn't hurt to upgrade some of your more useful items such as the bow or even the torch. You could probably even upgrade your shield of choice a couple times. Not necessarily all the way but a couple times wouldn't hurt. One more slime here. And now we could grab the item. At the end of this hallway, we are going to find the Karthus Blood Ring. This is a very interesting ring. 
it increases the amount of iframes per roll. So if you're having trouble with dodging enemies and the timing, I highly recommend this ring. You do take more damage if you get hit, but overall, I think it is a very useful ring and you don't really have to worry about the extra damage unless you're using extremely light armor. All right, we're going to backtrack a little bit. Now we're going to enter an area where we're going to see an invading NPC. I forgot to record him on this playthrough, so I'll edit him in so you can see where it is that he pops up. This guy is definitely one of the more difficult NPCs because he's using a strength weapon and he has a lot of poise so it's hard to trade blows with him. In my opinion it's better to keep your distance and attack him after he has used up most of his stamina. All of his attacks hurt a lot and can easily take you down in two or three hits. We'll meet this guy again farther down in this area, so you might see repeat items in a later video. And we're going to go down to this area. You'll notice that it's locked off and we got to get it open. But this is generally the location where we're headed. We are headed towards that rope bridge over there. This enemy up ahead can be pretty hard if you don't have a strike weapon, especially because it zooms around all over the place. Uh, you really want to close the distance fast and keep it staggered. Otherwise, it could be a pain in your butt. But using a strike weapon really minimizes the fight. It's almost jokingly easy. Up ahead, we're going to find a few enemies. To my left, there is going to be two of those hooded skeletons. And you don't want to fight them out in the open. You kind of want to lure them back down the staircase one by one. That way they don't group up on you. Along with the archer that is supporting them. But if we do it this way, you could see that this area is actually not too hard. Now it's hard to notice, but this second skeleton is actually has white glowing eyes. So make sure that you stay and kill it two times. Otherwise, you will leave it behind and it'll jump scare you later on. You could see how fast this guy actually is if you leave him to his own devices.
Once we go upstairs, you'll find the skeleton with the worker hat. He is the one that's actually controlling that rolling ball. Once you kill him, that rolling ball will dissipate. And the area up ahead is actually the area where we started. But the ledge is actually broken, so we can't actually go there from here. And there's no need. So now we're going to go forward from here, just exploring the surrounding area. And we find some more ashes. You could turn those in to the Shrine Handmaiden. And we're back on track. Down this cave area, there's going to be a Crystal Lizard. You want to take him out as soon as possible. But try not to start running until it runs. That way you can serve your stamina. I find that this guy, it's easy to miss the backstab, so I prefer just to knock him off the ledge. For an easy kill. We'll also notice this message on the ground, giving us a clue to a secret area here. Suspended bridge is wearing thin. And what we're going to do is as soon as we cross that bridge, we're going to cut the rope and it's going to form a ladder heading to a hidden area. So this is the area that was sealed off before we're going to open this. That way, if we die, we can just run all the way over here and we won't have to deal with any of the other enemies. You should also take note of all the skeletal remains on the ground. All these skeletons are going to be reviving. And as soon as you cross the bridge, they're going to try to attack you. But before we actually cross the bridge, we are going to wander off here to the right. And we're going to find our spouse to be. Of course, she doesn't know that yet. <laughs> ah, hello. We meet again. Have you seen Horus anywhere? She is still looking for oh, Horus. Yes, I see. I've searched high and low with no luck. Perhaps he's left the catacombs. Oh, Horus, where have you run off to? Oh, Horace, where have you run off to? Have you abandoned me? No. What a horrible thought. Oh, Horace, where have you, have you abandoned me? No. What a horrible thought. And if you look down below, Horace is actually not too far away from where she is. The area down there is completely optional and very easy to miss. You could go the entire game without actually noticing down there. Alright, so as soon as they start crossing this bridge, you'll notice that all the skeletons start to reassemble. I like to let all the skeletons get about halfway and then I cut the bridge. That way I make the most out of the souls they give me. There we go. And we will be heading down there in just a second. Now, the area boss 
is right down this corridor here, but we are not going to fight him yet. Instead, we are going to make our way down this bridge to a new pathway that it has enabled. A small word of caution here, as soon as I go down this archway and to the right, there is going to be a fire demon. So instead of fighting him, I am going to run past him into the hallway that you saw off to the left. And all of these skeletons are going to follow me in here. Be careful with them. They are white eyed skeletons. So try to take them out quickly. The skeletons also hold the demon's aggro and it's possible for them to start damaging the demon. You can fight the demon head on, but I prefer not to. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab my ranged weapon, that bow that I leveled up to level two. And I'm also going to grab some arrows and we're going to shoot it from the safety of this little corridor here. Now, it's still possible for that demon to swing his weapon far enough to where he hurts you. So you got to be careful. He also has a flame breath attack that it's possible to hit you with. You want to avoid those longer ranged attacks that he has. But as long as we stay inside of this hallway here, he is not too hard and it's easy to beat him. Depending on the level of your bow, this may take a little while. So I'll go ahead and fast forward this as well. And there we go. This demon also drops a boss soul. So you could turn it into Ludleth for a boss weapon of some sort. Now we're going to go ahead and backtrack. And there is a few items that were laying on the ground. We'll go ahead and take out the remaining skeleton enemies as well. There's one more in this direction. And if we go back around this side of the ledge, we are going to find a chest. Be careful with this chest. This chest is actually a mimic and it's not lying too far away from the next bonfire. So if you missed your chance to farm the symbol of Avarice Helm, which increases your item discovery, this is a perfect place to farm that symbol of Avarice. But if you've already gotten that helm, you could just go ahead and kill it. And you'll find the Black Blade. I believe this is actually one of the better katanas in the game. And it scales really nicely with strength. I can't say it's the best katana. I believe that honor falls to one of the katanas found in the Painted World of Ariandel DLC. But this is a close second. Here we're going to find the witch's ring. 
which increases the damage for your pyromancies. As you could see, the bonfire was not too far away. So if you're having trouble with the skeletons, I would recommend coming here and stoking the bonfire first and then fighting off the skeletons and the fire demon. All right, let's go forward here down this next cavern where we will find the smoldering lake. If you're familiar with Dark Souls 1, this is probably the same lake where you first encounter Quailana. But before you actually go into the lake, I am going to warn you about this giant scorpion turret off to the right. You could probably already hear it by now. And you want to always keep a close eye on it because it shoots three giant arrows at you and you have to continually dodge it. As long as you keep an eye on the incoming arrows, they're pretty easy to dodge. Just be careful because they really hurt. We're not going to pick up all these items yet, but there is one item in particular that is really important. And that is the item right at the head next to that electric worm. The Shield of Want. The Shield of Want doesn't particularly have any really good stats for a medium shield, but it does have a really important passive. And that is that when you have it equipped, you gain more souls. So it's basically like having an extra covetous silver serpent ring. We're going to go ahead and equip it. And this is going to be our main shield for most of the remainder of the game. You'll find that leveling up is a lot more tedious than it is in Elden Ring. Because of the lack of enemies that yield large amounts of souls. But don't worry, a few good areas to farm are coming up ahead. And I'll definitely make a video on them later. Now we're going to go ahead and take out this worm. As long as you stay on this ridge of rocks here, you're pretty much safe. The bonfire, the next bonfire is not too far away. It's right up ahead. You could go ahead and stoke it if you want. But since I think we're fairly safe here, we're going to go ahead and start shooting this worm with a bunch of arrows. And I think the best place to shoot it at is at the base of its at the base of its body where it starts to poke out of the ground. The reason I like to shoot it there is because it starts to wriggle around. And if you shoot it anywhere else, it's very easy to miss because of all that wriggle. So just take your time, shoot it carefully, and you will be able to grab a bunch of souls from it. There we go. We grab the lightning stake, which is an excellent miracle in case you're making a faith build. From here, we're going to go ahead and stoke the bonfire and we're going to venture in further into the swamp. Now, most people don't like to go into the swamp because of that annoying turret. But there's actually a few items here that can only be grabbed when the turret is on. So we're going to go ahead and grab that item. Let me just put my sword back on. And like I said, you want to always keep an eye on that turret. And just remember, it shoots three arrows at a time. After the third arrow, you can kind of rest for a little while.
You can also use these tree stumps to block a lot of the arrows. And now we're going to go over here to the left. Alright, off in the distance there you'll notice an area that has some brick ruins. And we're going to head over there. Baiting the attack from the turret. As soon as that turret hits those ruins, it's going to shatter them and it's going to expose an item beneath them. This item is pretty important if you want to 100% the game because it's a ring and you need to have unlocked all of the rings in order to qualify for that achievement. In addition to those brick ruins, up ahead, there's also a brick floor. As soon as it breaks, we can go ahead and fall right into it. There we go. Now, you could get to this location later on in the game, but I find that it's easier to get to the checkpoint from here. Uh, we're actually going to go this way first to grab a crystal lizard that's hiding at the end of this corridor. There it is. And it'll give us a chaos gem. It scales a bit better than the fire gem does. So these fire demons here, they could be a little annoying because they put up these little sunballs and the miniature suns act as turrets and effectively build a good defense around them. So you want to take them out before they can put down any of those miniature suns. The bonfire is right over here, but since we're doing well so far, we're not going to rest on it yet. We're going to finish off all the enemies in this pathway, and then we'll come back to it. This area up ahead is actually a trap. It's luring you to attack that guy in front of you, but there's two Gru enemies on either side of it here. You want to kite them towards you one by one. And I find the best way to do that is just to hit the wall with your weapon. And one enemy will rise and try to defeat you. Ouch. There's one enemy. Now we could take out the other one. Finally, the last enemy here. Ah. 
and we can now pick up the Isolith Pyromancy Tomb. This Pyromancy Tome is going to be too advanced for our Pyromancy Teacher. So we are going to have to wait for an additional NPC to show up at Firelink Shrine before we could get any use from it. Let's go ahead and rest to replenish. This wall here is an illusionary wall. It leads towards the area where we got our first bonfire. You can find that other bonfire across this atrium here. But I find that atrium to be very troublesome. So going back and forth is not advisable. In addition, these slimes are fire slimes. So damaging them with our usual fire weapons or fire attack is not going to be helpful. Instead, I like to go all the way across and take them out after they've fallen. Take your time with them and don't let them group up too much. Should be okay. Ouch. killed me it's okay we're not too far away the bonfire is right around the corner you see me walk slow from here because that fire demon is right inside that hallway and if I take off too fast it's going to aggro towards me So I'm just going to skip through all these guys and grab my souls. And I'll grab this item that's behind me as well. An Estus Shard. You're probably asking why I don't just go forward from here. But the game is actually giving me two bad choices here. If I fall through that hole in the ground, there's a bunch of enemies waiting for me at the bottom. And if I jump across the hole, there's even worse enemies waiting for me on the other. I find that it's better to take care of both of those areas while coming in from a different direction. So I usually take my time and work my way in another direction. I think the light attack is actually working better. And one more slime over here. All right, you might have noticed the hole on the ground. You don't want to fall in there because it leads you towards a trap. In addition, you'll notice that statue lizard on the other side of the hole. Um, we're going to go and get to the other side, but, uh, but I prefer not to jump over this hole because there's some pretty troublesome enemies on the other side. So instead, we're going to go back in the direction we came and we'll head down this stairwell. Here we go. 
will head down in this direction. And we are going to counter a few more Gru. We are going to make it down that hallway, but I prefer to go about it this way. Because otherwise all these Gru are going to group up on you inside of that hallway. Instead, I always find it easier to take them out one by one, and that's easily accomplished if we do it this way. This should be the last one here. And halfway down this corridor, we'll find another item. This is that hole that was on the upper hallway. If you would have fell down through here, all of the Gru would have jumped right on you. We're going to go ahead and keep employing that same method. Just keep kiting the enemies one by one into these narrow corridors. It really minimizes the risk of them all stacking up on you. If you're wondering what the heck is going on with this area that has piles and piles of bodies stacked all over the place, it's exactly what it looks like. There's been a continuous battle between the humans and the demon race. Back in Dark Souls 1, Gwyn, the king of that time period, and the original Lord of Cinder, sought out to eradicate the entire demon race. He did this by employing his silver knights to hunt down every last one of them. And you're gonna find a few of those silver knights still here, fighting that endless battle, except that their armor no longer holds that silver sheen. After endless years here fighting fire demons, their armor has now been charred black and they are now known as the Dark Knights. We are going to find one such knight hidden behind this illusionary wall. And a small battle going on. This Dark Knight here is very hard to fight in these close quarters, so I like to lure it out to a more open environment. And that's going to be in this location here. Once he's out in the open, he's not too hard. It's very easy to dodge around him and get the backstab. And there we go. We can head back to where we first encountered him to pick up the Black Knight sword. Which I believe is a great sword. Alright, so the next area up ahead is pretty troublesome. We're going to try to run by all the enemies and just grab the checkpoint before we continue forward. But if we die along the way, I wouldn't worry too much about it because the next checkpoint is pretty close to an area that we've already unlocked. So let's try and just zoom by all these guys.
and I died. But it's not a big deal. The next time I respawn, I am going to fast travel to a different checkpoint. And it'll make grabbing those souls a lot easier. Let's go ahead and go recover all our souls. This time we're going to spawn in at the demon ruins. And you'll see that it's literally just across that atrium we were just at. The first enemy you want to take out is the fire demon that's on the left so that it doesn't continue to create turrets. You'll find that it already has two turrets up. So backstabbing it is probably your best option. That way you get the invulnerable frames from the backstab. There we go, and now most of the turrets are down. And you notice to the left is actually the area that we respond into at the beginning. And the area we died at with all the Gru is right around the corner here. Instead of fighting them head on, I am going to toss a fireball at them and lure them in. I want to lure as I want to lure them in one by one, but sometimes that's not possible. So, 2 by 2, so 2 by 2 is not too bad. There's one. And there's two more around the same corner. We're going to kill them off before we continue. I'll back off a little just so that we could stay away from this poison. There we go. And you'll see that this is actually a place where I originally died. Alright, so I always dread these enemies that are up ahead. There's two of them. One of them is facing you, luring you to attack it. But there's another one to the left that'll... That'll try to jump scare you if you're not careful. So, let's go ahead and fight these guys one on one. You can start to back off as soon as the one on the left starts to follow you. They are very annoying and they do a very annoying jump attack. Whatever you do, don't let them land on top of your head. There we go. Now we just have that one to deal with.
it's very hard to stagger them so try out to only get one hit in and then roll away or block There we go. That one wasn't so hard. There's a blob up on that roof and around the corner to the right is that statue that we that we saw at the beginning. Um, just be careful. You want to grab this item, but be careful with the blob that's on the top. And after you grabbed it, we're pretty much almost done with this area. So we're going to go ahead and rest at the bonfire again. Because we're not going to be heading back down in this direction. I think we're going to end it here as a matter of fact. And we'll continue the rest of this location in another video. After heading back to Firelink Shrine, I would recommend that you spend all your souls. The next location can be kind of long and it's very far from another checkpoint. So in order to prevent the loss of all of your souls, go ahead and spend all of them. You're not going to need any more arrows or anything like that. So spend them however you wish, be it soul level or buying sorcery spells. Just try to augment your build as best as you can. In the next video, we'll finish Welcome off home. the Smoldering Lake and we'll continue Speak forward to defeat desire. the Catacombs boss Very and well. enter into our next then location. Thanks for joining us again. Bye-bye.